So today I'm going to be teaching you about naming metal and non-metal compounds. So the first thing you need to know is the basics of how to name them. The basics of how to name them are taking the first part of the compound, so the first element, naming it right as you see it on the periodic table, and then you take the second one and change the suffix, which is the end of it, to I. Now some people can have a bit of trouble um, naming, figuring out when to put I on the end. The best advice I can give you is that it'll always come after a syllable. So like fluoride, for example, which is fluorine. You would have fluor, which is one syllable, and then you'd add the i. Some of the elements have more than one syllable, and you can kind of tell also when to add the i. It'll just sound better. So for instance, selenium. You'd put selenide. Like it wouldn't sound right to put selide. If you're still having trouble, the other option for you is since there's not that many non-metals on the table, and these are metal and non-metal compounds, so the ending that you'd have to change would always be on a non-metal. The non-metal is the second part of the compound. So you could technically memorize the endings of all of them because there's not too many if you're still having trouble with it. But once you get used to um, what they sound like, you'll probably remember them anyway. So our first example is going to be BEF2. So if we have that, we have BE and we can look on our periodic table to see what BE is. And BE is beryllium. So we'll type in beryllium. Next, we'll look at F, and the other thing to note is it doesn't matter how much of that element you have, those little numbers, um, it doesn't matter how much you have of them, it'll still, it doesn't affect the naming of the metal and non-metal compound. It will with other types of compounds, but not this type. So we look on the periodic table, and F is fluorine, and so we're going to change fluorine to fluoride. So change that to fluoride. And that's it. That's all you need to do for that. So now we're going to look at our second one, and our second one starts with Li, again the two doesn't matter. So the first part, remember, um, we just name it as it is on the periodic table. So we see Li is lithium, so we'll just name lithium. And then we see SE. And that's selenium. So we're going to change it to selenide. So selenide. The next example we have is KCL. So we're going to start off with looking at what K is on the periodic table. We go to the periodic table and we see that K is potassium. So we'll write in potassium. And the second part is Cl. So we'll go and we see that Cl is chlorine, so we change it to chloride, the E to the I, and we'll have potassium chloride. What I'm going to show you here is that if you're trying to figure out um, whether you have whether you have to name your compounds this way, you can look at a periodic table and you can see that the metals and the non-metals are split up. So the blue here is metals and the silver is non-metals. And if you have one from the blue section and one from the silver section, you know that's a metal and non-metal compound. So for instance here, we have K and O. So if we look at our periodic table, you'll see that K is in the blue section, you'll see that O is in the silver section. So that is a metal and non-metal compound. Same with all the other ones we did. BE would be in the blue section, F would be in the silver, LI would be in the blue, SC would be in the silver, K would be in the blue, and CL would be in the silver. So potassium 
and we see that oxygen here is in the silver and the potassium is in the blue. So we'll go back to our other table to see what it's called. So we have potassium and then we have oxygen, which we're going to change to oxide. And then we're done with that one. Next we're going to have CaBr2. So we'll look at our periodic table, Ca is calcium, and Br, we'll look at our periodic table, it's bromine, and so we'll change the ene to I, just so we'll have bromide. And we have LiCl for our last one. We had, we knew from up above that Li is lithium, so we'll write lithium. And we know that ends with Cl, and we had potassium chloride end with Cl earlier, so we we'll know that Cl just changed to chloride. And that's our last example, and that's all you need to know for naming nonmetal metal compounds. See you next time!